Hello, this is part two of breaking down a painting, kind of a how to. And we got this far in the last video, and it's just kind of a basic laying down of the idea of the painting. So we're going to go ahead now and put in the details. Um, we're going to add the color and the water and the trees. I'm going to start with the trees, and I'm using a little bit of a um, transparent. Indian yellow and as you can see it becomes more transparent as I kind of thin it out and I'm using a really stiff brush to do this because um, I just really like the effect. My brushes are not terribly expensive brushes anyway um, but I do use different ones for different things and they I do coat them all with this electrical tape because even though I don't feel like I need expensive brushes, I get the same results from my cheaper brushes. Um, I like a sturdy handle to hang on to. I'm hanging on to them all day long, so I want to make them comfortable, and they are infinitely more comfortable this way. So in, in breaking down a painting, or, you know, in the first video we talked a bit about how we're all kind of born creative and yet we, we lose, we're, we're taught, it's taught out of us and we, we lose that confidence and we say, oh, I couldn't even paint a stick figure and that's just not true. It's, it's a practice and the more you practice, the better you get. And whether you're doing it for fun, um, you know, it can be incredibly relaxing, but the key is to keep the pressure off, to be in the moment of it, to enjoy the process because pushing paint around is really fun. So I went in with kind of an orange, these colors of the sky. It's, um, I make that color out of a kind of a fluorescent red and my Indian yellow. Um, I have a few colors that I just really like the combinations of so I mix big jars of them. Um, this is the Indian yellow with the fluorescent red, and they are Nova Color paint. Um, my teacher, Robert Burridge, one of my great teachers, turned me on to that paint. And um, yeah, it's wonderful. It's really inexpensive, gorgeous colors. I like the consistency of it. So I'm just kind of adding a bit of color here and there. Like you see, you know, you. People think, oh, a pine tree, it's a green. But if you really look at it, there's so many shades of green that you see in it and so many reflective colors. And that's what's exciting. Once you start painting, you really start looking at the world around you and noticing the subtleties. And I encourage you to do that, whether you try a painting on your own, whether you paint regularly, um, just really make it a practice to really look. Look at the sky. There's a party up there every day and you just have to look up to see it. So now we're going to add some of these reflective colors starting with where the sun. We're all mesmerized by sunsets, right? And I think one of the things we're so mesmerized by is the enormous amount of color I love to stare at Lake Michigan and just see how many colors I can find in a, in a sunset. And it's always amazing. There's so much turquoise and purple that you see. And of course, the, the water is never anything more than the reflection of the sky, the color in the water, that is. And so you're going to get a lot of these colors that you see up in here down here in the water. So I'm just kind of, you know, looking up at my sky and thinking about reflective colors. My One of the things I love about painting is how it makes me dip into my memory, thinking of all the times I've sat in front of Lake Michigan and just studied that water and the reflection and seeing how many colors can be Found. So I like paintings, you know, art's always deeply personal, and for me, 
I've, as I've mentioned before, it really, it's first about joy and happiness, and I want that experience when I look at art that's in my home and when I make art of experiencing the joy. But I also like it painterly. I'm not a fan of, of photo realism. I'm of that school of thought that if I wanted it to look like picture, I'd take a picture. And keep in mind, I started out as a photographer. And so literally, if I wanted it to look like a photo, I'd take the photo. And I love the painterly element of art. This September, I studied art in Italy and in Florence, actually. And the Florentine school of thought is greatly influenced, and how could it not be, by the Renaissance. And um, the Renaissance was very much about realism. So I've been noticing that, even though I'm keeping things very, very painterly, just touches. Um, I've been moving, and maybe I would say I'm drawing more in my paintings um, for now. But really, it's about what paint can do, and it's about what you and paint can do when the two shall meet. So I'm thinking about purples and turquoises. I'm just going to add light touches of that. And little waves, just a stiller night. But you know, just as the water breaks at the sand, you get these white elements. And I never, you know, finish a painting the day I created it. It's never finished that day. It's about going back and revisiting and staring at it. So I'll hang a piece in the studio for several days, just kind of looking to see, hmm, is it, is my eye happy, right? That's what art is about. There's art that pleases the eye, and you know when your eye is, is uncomfortable. So you just kind of look for that uncomfortableness or that, that pleasing element and just a touch more of the white okay so not completely finished here but I am at a place where I'm gonna pause walk away from it and come back to it another day and see how I feel about it. Thanks for joining.